In this tutorial, we're going to talk about integrating non-guide code into your Plus One applications. There are a number of different non-guide languages that can be integrated into Guide. All of the IEC 611.31-3 languages are supported, as well as C. We're going to concentrate on one of the 611.31 languages, Structured Text, but the technique for integrating the others is similar. This tutorial should give you a head start for all of them. We'll start by adding some new structured text code to our program. Afterwards, we'll show you how to import existing structured text code. For this demonstration, we'll be replacing some guide code with the equivalent code and structured text. Here's the code we'll be replacing. This is a skid steer calculation where we take inputs from two joysticks representing our propel and steer values and convert them into right and left pump commands. Once again, this is the guide code we'll be replacing, but the calculation isn't important. What we want to accomplish is to create a structured text POU which takes two input values, does some calculation, and returns two output values. POU, by the way, stands for Program Organizational Unit. Now let's get started. There are a number of ways to proceed when adding POUs, but we'll start with the call POU component. First, delete the guide code that we'll be replacing. Next, drag in a call POU component. The call POU component tells guide that we'll be calling an instance of a POU at this point in our guide program. Guide code execution order is respected here as elsewhere in your application. If you don't know about execution order in guide, please see the guide user manual. Note that at this point, we still don't know which POU we'll be calling. And in fact, we still haven't added any to our program. Add a true constant to the call or enable signal. This will cause the POU to be called on every program loop. You can also only call the POU under certain conditions, similar to a conditional execution module. We now need to route our input and output signals to the POU, where they will be available in the interface. Once again, we will have our two input and two output signals. Only signals, not subbuses, on the top level bus will be visible in the interface. We now query the call POU component. First thing we'll notice is that all of the signals that we put on the bus are available in the interface, but we still have to select which ones we want passed to the POU. Next we have to give our POU a name. We'll call it Dual Path POU and then click Edit POU. We need to tell Guide which of the 611.31-3 languages we'll be using, structured text in this case, and whether we're creating a function or a function block. Function blocks are able to remember information since their last invocation, while functions start fresh every time. See the 611.31-3 standards for more information about their differences. We'll be using the function type for this demo. Click on Edit POU and a number of things will happen. You'll see that an XML file has been added to our project. This is where our current POU will be added and where we can add subsequent POUs if we like. You'll also see the POU editor is open where we can start entering our code. The input and output parameters have already been added to the interface with appropriate data types. This is also where we'd add any local variables that we want to declare. You'll see a list of available data types on the right-hand side. The bottom pane is where we enter our code, whether it be structured text, as in our case, or another 611.31-3 language. To the right, you'll see the available statements, including mathematical functions, control statements like if, then, case, and while loops, data type conversion statements, 
function blocks like counters, timers, and edge detection, string manipulation statements, and so forth. Leaving the PLC editor, there are a couple things to note in our project. First, we can see the PLC files that are now part of our project listed in the Project Manager. We can see all the POUs which are contained in the file and their characteristics. Here we see our structured text function POU. You can also see that we can add global variables in addition to local, constant, and retained variables in our POUs. We can now compile normally with F5. Any errors will be shown in the Error Warning Hint Messages pane, like for compiling regular guide code. Clicking on the error will bring you to the relevant line number in the PLC editor. Here we've got a misspelling in the data declaration for a floating point variable. We mentioned earlier that, in addition to creating new code with a PLC editor, you can also import existing code, for instance code which has been created in another development environment. Let's look at that now. Remember when we created our POU just now? We saw that Guide created an XML file in our project and stored our structured text code there. That file uses a file format called PLC Open which, as the name implies, is an open format defined by an independent organization. Any code which has been saved to the PLC open format from either another guide application or another development environment can then be imported into guide. If you want more information on the PLC open standard, visit their website at www.plcopen.org. Importing a PLC Open XML file is easy. Right click on the PLC Units folder in your project and then Add Existing PLC Code. The PLC Open file will be added to the project along with any POUs that it contains. Lastly, Although Guide offers extensive support for IEC 61131-3 languages, it should be noted that there are some limitations. For instance, tasks and configurations are not supported, and there are limitations on retained variable support. Contact the Help Desk if you have questions around specific functionalities. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at Plus One Help Desk, P L U S plus sign, the digit one Help Desk at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.